Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, several people here have been drawing attention to the importance of having a wider stakeholder involvement in the IGF. Uh, the lady who was an MP from the UK said we should think more of uh, the concerns of citizens, the intervention that was just made did the same. I would like to briefly draw your attention to an open letter that has been circulated here in Hyderabad and which has been signed by 109 organizations from civil society from all over the world and also by a number of individuals. Uh, many of these organizations are from the Global South. Many of these are grassroots organizations. Very few of them are actually present here. And all of them ask the IGF to pay attention to a particular issue. I don't want to read the complete letter, but I would like to read the paragraph that has the key demand. And the paragraph says, we strongly urge the IGF to directly address the following key global public interest and policy issues. The increasing corporatization of the internet, increasing proprietization of standards and codes that go into building the internet, increasing points of control being embedded into the internet in the name of security and intellectual property violations, and a huge democratic deficit in global internet governance. Some of this letter is written in a language that is very different from the language that is spoken here, and I mean in terms of vocabulary. I know that makes it sometimes difficult for people to relate to, but I think if we are serious about being a multi-stakeholder venue that wants to be inclusive, then we have to go beyond those kind of restrictions, and we have to try and be open and address these concerns as well. I feel that with the considerable attention for human rights in this uh, IGF, and hopefully even more in the next IGF, some of that has been hit there, but I do hope we con will continue to build on this and take the considerations as expressed in this letter as well. Thank you. I thought there was somebody up, in, uh, uh, somebody up here in front. Uh, I have I, a mic. Uh, okay, I can't see it. Uh, can I have uh, uh, Mr. Mige, I think Ayesha, did you want to? Yeah, Ayesha, and then the lady here. Hmm? Yes, I would like to complement some information that was been given by Dr. Volkan Um The address, the URL of the Dynamic Coalition of the Internet of Things is simply internet dash or dot dash things.org. Now I would like to um, suggest maybe a way to get out of the lack of, I will say, um, purpose that some stakeholders are now feeling. One thing is to have an open um, assembly is very good so that stakeholders meet one another. Now for that they continue to meet you need to bring forward, in fact, some more tangible issues, some tangible ways. And as you know, from the very start, I suggested to fully implement the mandate of the IGF and to have the possibility to make recommendations on emerging issues. One last year, uh, the Dynamic Coalition on Linguistic Diversity was the only coalition so far who made recommendations now I suggest that all the dynamic coalition could make recommendation, and this recommendation should not be recommendation of the IGF, but listed as a document of the IGF, as recommendation at the IGF. So at least we'll make some little step-by-step -step progress. Thank you. Aisha Hello? and Peter, and uh, sorry, can we, since the mic is, why don't you pass the mic to And then Ayesha and Peter. Viola Kretz from Maya and IC Volunteer. Um, it's been very stimulating and it's been very 
I think encouraging. I would like to um, emphasize on what some of the others have said as far as uh, this IGS has been concerned. Of course, um, challenges do remain and um, in, in terms of uh, the dynamic coalition for linguistic diversity, I think uh, what has been very encouraging precisely is to see that languages have gained an importance in this uh, space. And um, maybe one of the objectives for the future would be to see how instead of having 350 languages, we could have 3,500 languages in cyberspace. And doing so, also how we could maybe m include more uh, some of the communities um, on a, who have not been included enough in this space and dialogue, which are the linguists, bring together linguists and technicians, and also uh, maybe build on some of the examples of very good participation that have been uh, included here, uh, for example, in the session by UNESCO where questions uh, were taken on a distance basis, uh, where more dialogue uh, was given rather than just uh, presentations and monologues. Uh, maybe even more build on, on that uh, remote participation in order to further include uh, uh, those 106 organizations that were to a great extent not here and uh, signed the open letter to broaden uh, the, the inclusion of who can participate in IGF. Thank you. Aisha and Peter. Thank you, Chair. On behalf of the International Chamber of Commerce and the members of the BASIS Initiative, I'm pleased to express that we would like to welcome the Dynamic Coalition on Multi-Stakeholder National and Regional Initiatives and express our support uh, for this dynamic coalition as it evolves. As we've stated before, uh, the national and regional level multi-stakeholder dialogue on these issues will enrich the experience of the IGF at the global level and we look forward to helping to motivate business from around the world to participate in those initiatives. Thank you.